Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in prayer this weekend. As you know, this past Wednesday was the feast of, the, um, of Our Lady of Fatima, and we were able to tape the rosary, so that is on the website, and we'll continue on the website, so if you want to pray the rosary, you can do it along with those few people we had here to pray it. In regards to reopening, unfortunately, I don't have any more news for you. We're still waiting to hear more from the bishop, the county executive, and the governor, of course. But in the meantime, um, our staff has certainly been collaborating and beginning to um, put down plans for how we can best reopen with safe distancing and all of the necessary disinfection. So we, we are moving ahead with lease plans, so we will be prepared. I'll take a moment to thank so many of you who were kind enough to return your email addresses and cell phone numbers for us so that we can send out information in a much quicker way when that's necessary as it is during these days. Um, I think we had about another 150 people this past week. So if you have not sent in your email or cell phone, you can do that one of two ways. There's a cutoff on the letter that I sent to you. And you can just mail that in. Or you can go to the website. At the bottom of the front page of the website is the um, little box that says stay in the loop. You can fill that out and then mail it and send it right in. Next Sunday, May 24th, is the monthly food pantry collection for the Cathedral Downtown Food Pantry. If you could please have any bags here with items by 11 a.m. next Sunday. Again, you can use your own bags from home or you can pick up one at one of the church entrances. Um, items that are needed are also listed on the website. And again, thank you for your tremendous support of that last month. As I said, it was just amazing. We appreciate that, as does the food pantry. I do want to let you know also that for the Faithful Manlius Food Pantry, while we do the collection for the downtown Cathedral Food Pantry, we do support... Uh, to a large extent, the FM food pantry with our tithing regularly throughout the year. And then once in a while, there are some faith formation food collections for them. So we certainly keep that as a priority. The Red Cross will have a blood drive on Friday and Saturday, June 5 and 6 at our school multi-purpose room. Again, a big need for that. June 5 and 6, please go to the Red Cross website to sign to register for that. This coming Thursday is Ascension Thursday. We will have a tape mass on by Wednesday afternoon for Ascension Thursday. Uh, last week, amidst all of the announcements, I forgot one big announcement, and that was to wish Father Hearn a happy 80th birthday. We had a nice little celebration for Father Hearn. Uh, Monsignor Bill and I, and he had a nice dinner at the rectory that e Saturday evening, and then Sunday, he had a big surprise as our staff and family had a birthday parade go by with about probably 25 cars. It was really very nice. So happy birthday to Father Hearn. We're so happy to have him with us. In regards to Monsignor Yazel, he continues to be hospitalized but does seem to be doing a little bit better. So we ask your continued prayers for him. And when I you know, do so many thank yous here, especially to Jane and Cherie and everyone else who uh, helps us with this, I keep forgetting to thank Patrick Barrett and Christine Heine. Patrick is in the background doing the videotaping, and Christine Heine is the one who downloads it every week. So thanks to Patrick and Christine. So we hope you're all well. Have a great day with your families, and please know of our continued prayer. Good morning, and welcome to Immaculate Conception. The apostles were so moved by the resurrection that they gave up their former lives to teach the story of Jesus. The new Christian church is growing. Paul reminds us to always be ready to give this explanation for our hope, that he who suffered was brought to life in the Spirit. In the Gospel, Jesus promises that he will not leave us orphans, but will send another advocate to be with us always. The resurrection will be complete in the Pentecost when the Spirit of God fully comes to the apostles. Our celebrant and homilist this morning is Monsignor Ron Bill. 
and I, Ann Resick, am the proclaimer of the word. I will now share with you the novena prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, full of grace, patroness of this nation and mother of the church, in this time of illness and worldwide need, we seek your intercession for the human family before your son's throne of grace and mercy. We ask for strength in adversity, health in weakness, and comfort in sorrow. Help us, O Blessed Mother, to be filled with confidence and trust in the tender compassion of our God. Let us not be afraid. Like our own St. Mary Ann Cope, who entrusted her life and ministry among the outcasts of society into the care of our divine physician. Continue to watch over all who are sick, as well as those who care for them, and give wisdom to all who are seeking a cure. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For our opening hymn, we will sing Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mass this morning, this sixth Sunday of Easter time. We begin knowing that God is very much with us during these troublesome times. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we begin our liturgy, we pause aware of God's goodness to us. Christ, you call us to be your faithful followers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Risen Christ, you teach us how to hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Risen Christ, you invite us to share your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we leave in remembrance we may always hold to in in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs that he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Cry out in joy to the Lord, all peoples on earth. Sing to the praise of his name. Proclaim him forever, tremendous his deeds for us. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Leading his people see fire and water, bringing their souls to life. Come sing of his glory, 
His love is eternal. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Praise to you. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you, and in a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, and you will live. And on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. calling of the first disciples in St. John's Gospel, it crackles with excitement. You can sense the beginning of something big, something that's going to change the world. As the fishermen see Jesus for the first time and decide to follow him. Of course, when it was happening, they didn't know how special it was. In fact, one of the men wasn't sure he wanted to follow Jesus. He says, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? 
Nathaniel asked. Our Lord responds is telling. Rather than being offended, he looked at Nathaniel and said, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel said, Well, how do you know me? He's astonished. He's amazed and touched by this statement. And Jesus says, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. I saw you. To this, Nathaniel could only say, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. It's unusual that Nathaniel would change so abruptly from a skeptic to a believer. But Jesus saw him as no one had ever seen him before or known him before. And Jesus welcomed him instead of judging him for his doubts. Rather, Jesus approached his honesty. You're a truth teller, Jesus said. And Jesus was never afraid of a person's honest questions or doubts. They didn't make him defensive. His response to Nathaniel was like it later would be to doubting Thomas. I see you, Thomas. Now come and see me. Jesus knew the antidote to doubt was to invite the doubter in to him. We followers of Jesus have to be impressed by the care and concern the entire Blessed Trinity has for each member of our Lord's flock. Not only do we have the sacraments that help us live the teachings of Jesus, but we have the three persons of the Trinity who take part in safeguarding our vocation as we journey through life. Each advocate acts by re representing our interests when necessary and defending us when needed. The Holy Spirit, the second advocate, was sent from the Father to dwell within this, the believers as keepers of the memory of our Lord's teaching. As the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit ratifies the teachings of Jesus, who is the authentic revelation of God, originating from the Father and defending our Lord's truth against the world's angel of darkness. During his public ministry, Jesus taught his disciples a lot of things about his heavenly Father and about the kind of life he, w he wanted them to live. But he didn't expect them to agree to this all at once, nor does he expect that, that we do it either. He knows it's a life's work, and that's why the Holy Spirit is so important. He comes to us to help us to remember all that Jesus taught and guide us into the life that is most promising and pleasing to our Lord. The Holy Spirit also inspires and strengthens Jesus' followers to choose good actions when a choice is presented. The holiness of Christians is deepened and intensified as he or she chooses acts of service for neighbors who are facing challenges and hardships alone like those who are elderly today in nursing homes or living alone during the coronavirus. In this way, the Spirit motivates believers to see God in the everyday lives. During this time, many ask, has the Lord left us? Is the Holy Spirit no longer our advocate and defender? I remember a teacher once telling me, pointing upward, our main work in this earth is to get from here to there, but we can never presume we'll get from here to there without help. And God is that help. And if we believe this and live it, we will have nothing to fear because we know we have the perfect advocate, the Holy Spirit.
we join together now as we profess our faith. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> On the cross, Jesus surrendered his life to the Father for all of us. Let us pray in the confidence of this surrender. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, our bishops and clergy, that the Spirit will guide them in pastoring the church in Christ's love during these turbulent times, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all medical personnel and first responders, that their skills and devotion to duty will be recognized and appreciated, and that they will be renewed in strength and courage we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and the hospitalized with the coronavirus, that they will be healed and for the speedy and effective development of vaccines and treatments to end the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those young people awaiting First Communion and confirmation, that they will always be close to Jesus and feel the support of our parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For steadfastness in faith, for Immaculate Conception parishioners deprived of the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and the fellowship of parish family at this difficult time, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in devotion to our Blessed Mother Mary, the patroness of our parish and our nation, during her special month of May, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that they rest in the glory of the risen Christ, especially Edward Loftus Sr., father of Edward Loftus and brother of David Loftus, Fred Kirschenheider, godson of Dan and Joan Kinsella, and Donna Spector, sister of Nick Rosh, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Good and gracious God, your Holy Spirit speaks for us. Grant what our advocate inspires us to ask in the name of the risen Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. For our offertory hymn, we'll sing, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, his name for, for our, our good, good and the good of all of his holy church. Let us pray. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He's the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they claim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all of the faithful. Remember our brothers and sisters, our loved ones, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, especially Mary Ann Cope, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. the Savior's command now informed by divine teaching, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer a sign of peace to one another. Peace be with you. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by your most holy body and blood from all of our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. And for those who would like to receive communion and can only receive it through spiritual communion, we pray, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, O oh, him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the banquet of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I'm not worthy to you. Grant that we should enter to my roof. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter to my roof. Glory be to you forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Happy those called at the banquet of the Lord. 
And Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thank Thanks you. be to God, and thank you for coming. For our ending hymn, we will sing, sing with all the saints in glory. <clears throat>